In this decisive battle of the Spanish-American War of 1898, the Spanish were the doomed side. The superiority of American forces was overwhelming. But the Yankees had to climb San Juan Hill and the neighboring hills under the terrifying fire of the entrenched enemy. This battle became the highlight in the PR campaign of the future U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, who commanded the Rough Riders Volunteer Unit, consisting mostly of cowboys and shooters from the then-dying Wild West. American troops were encamped along the road to Santiago, stretching for miles. The 2nd Cavalry Division, two brigades, under the command of Brigadier General Samuel Sumner, Commander General Wheeler was ill, was located below the El Pozo Hill. Due to circumstances, it was a horseless cavalry division. Only artillery, supply wagons, officers, and their orderlies retained the cavalry. Colonel Leonard Wood's brigade included the 1st U.S. Volunteer Cavalry, known as the Rough Riders, an irregular unit with not the best discipline. A Harvard graduate and certified surgeon, Wood built his military reputation in the 1886 campaign against the great Apache chief Geronimo, for which he received the Medal of Honor. He was on friendly terms with Theodore Roosevelt. On the road behind El Pozo was Jen. Jacob Ford Kent's 1st Infantry Division with three brigades. Two divisions were part of the 5th Army Corps under the command of Major General William Rufus Shafter. The dominant heights around Santiago de Cuba were defended by 750 Spanish soldiers with two corrupt quick-firing howitzers. The Spanish commander, General Arsenio Linares y Pombo, placed most of Santiago's garrison of 10,429 soldiers, sailors, marines in other areas of defense or in reserve. An act of incredible stupidity the explanation for which was never found. In the north, 3,000 Cuban rebels under General Calixto Garcia Niguez blocked the arrival of any Spanish reinforcements. To the northeast, 520 Spanish soldiers under the command of Brigadier General Joaquin Vara de Rey and Rubio occupied the town of El Cani. They threatened the right flank of the Americans, so it was decided to deal with them first, for which parts of the 2nd Cavalry, now dismounted, division were assigned. Early on the morning of July 1st, 1898, American troops moved into position. At 7 a.m., the battle for El Cani began. The roar of guns prompted an ailing General Wheeler, a former Confederate, to join the troops. But the real control of the troops was taken over by an officer of his headquarters, Lieutenant Colonel Edward McClernand. At 9 o'clock in the morning, a column of Americans, three brigades, moved towards San Juan Hill. It was decided to take the hill by the forces of the brigade of Major General Hawkins from the 1st Infantry Division. Spanish snipers pretty battered the ranks of the advancing. The battle formations were mixed up. Most of all, the soldiers of the 71st New York Volunteer Infantry Regiment contributed to this. Demoralized by enemy fire, they stopped and blocked the way for other units. The American plan began to crumble. In the San Juan Valley, north of the Santiago Road, Sumner's Cavalry Division lined up for the upcoming assault on Kettle Hill. Carroll's brigade lined up in the first line. Her 9th Regiment kept to the right, the 6th was in the center. The third was on the left. Roosevelt's horsemen were waiting behind the 9th Regiment. To his left and slightly ahead was Wood's 1st Brigade, and behind him in reserve was Wood's 10th Brigade. Directly in front of the cavalry division was Kittle Hill, so named by the Americans after the large iron kittle they found on it after the attack. Two of Hawkins' regiments, anchored along the road, were waiting for Evers's brigade. Eight rows of barbed wire ran between Kent's infantry and the Spanish trenches. The shooting went on for a long time. After all, the Americans were waiting for the units that were supposed to return after the capture of El Cani. But there the Spanish defenders fought until they ran out of ammunition and their heroic commander, Vara de Rey, was killed. There were no orders from General Shafter. It is obvious that he did not even see the battle. Only an assault on the heights could force a stop to the murderous Spanish fire, and the commanders tied the initiative to themselves. Lieutenant Ard, after arguing with General Hawkins, received approval to attack. With a pistol in one hand and a sword in the other, he ran forward, crouching, shouting, forward, guys, let's go, we can't stop here. The soldiers followed him. General Hawkins joined the attackers. The entire 1st Infantry Division rushed into battle. The regiments marched across open country in no real order. The Spaniards intensified the fire. More and more fighters fell. The Americans were already 150 yards from the bottom of the hill when the bugler, without orders, gave a drawn-out attack. Signal. Everyone rushed to the top of the hill. The attack was supported by a battery of Gatling guns. The future President Theodore Roosevelt lost most of his officers under Spanish fire and also decided to move his horsemen to the attack. Just in time, an officer from headquarters arrived and ordered him to move forward and support the regulars on the hills ahead. The offensive front was small, as a result, all parts were mixed up. But the American impulse was already unstoppable. 
The barbed wire fence was broken. Roosevelt broke away from his people. He had only an orderly with him. As the men of the 1st and 9th Cavalry Regiments and the riders crossed Kettle Hill, the Spanish fell back to the next line of trenches and resumed their fire. Colonel Hamilton, commander of the 9th Cavalry, was killed. The Spaniards were killed by a topographical error. They dug their trenches on the topographic ridge instead of the military ridge, about 10 meters below the topographic ridge, and the unevenness of the 120-foot steep slope prevented them from seeing the Americans below and covering them with fire. Grabbing tufts of grass, the Yankees climbed up the 30-degree slope and saw the dead and wounded on the battlefield. But, oddly enough, no one on the hill. When the Americans got within 30 feet of the trenches, the Spanish fled. Lieutenant Ard, still leading the way, jumped over the trench but was killed by a Spanish bullet. The battle for the blockhouse began, which was defended by 35 Spaniards. Unable to break through the heavy wooden doors and boarded up windows, the Americans climbed onto the tiled roof. Fur fell into a hole made by artillery and were killed. Another 15 people jumped inside and, after several minutes of hand-to-hand -hand combat, cleared the building. By 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the Americans captured San Juan Hill. The Spanish retreated across the valley to the next line of trenches. The Americans rushed for cover when enemy fire resumed. The restless Roosevelt rushed to the attack. After walking 100 yards with only five soldiers, he turned around to find himself advancing alone. In response to the commander's abuse, the soldiers innocently replied that they had not heard his order. Roosevelt approached General Sumner for permission to lead the other regiments in the attack. The general assured him that the soldiers would follow him. Further, the Americans simply could not keep up with the retreating Spaniards. But Roosevelt stopped the advance when the road to Santiago opened. He temporarily included black soldiers in his Rough Riders. These soldiers fought splendidly throughout the battle, but since their officers were not with them on the hill, they began to retreat. Roosevelt pulled out a revolver and walked towards them. He praised them for their bravery, but threatened to shoot the first who moved to the rear. African Americans asked Roosevelt's men if he would carry out this threat. The horsemen answered in the affirmative in chorus, and the soldiers of the tide under the visor. The Spaniards tried to counterattack, but without any enthusiasm. The fighting continued for another two weeks, but on July 17, Major General José Toral y Vázquez, the commander of the Spanish Fourth Army Corps, signed an agreement on the surrender of Santiago de Cuba. More than a hundred years later, on January 6, 2001, Colonel Theodore Teddy Roosevelt was awarded the Medal of Honor for his brilliant July 1, 1898 attack on San Juan Hill.